Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crestorio 2 for the final part of this week's update video. And I'm going to carry on from where I left off in the last video, talking about the various resources and which ones we've got shortages of, which ones seem to be doing well, and the struggle to make sure they're all in the, uh, in the latter category. Down on Big Rid, things are certainly running. You can see two trash belts here going flat out, carrying lots of lots of rubbish away. The Vitamalange Extract Belt is running solidly as well, so that's refilling after we make after we're churning through all of that to turn it into modules. So we're putting the putting the replacements for all of that back into the spaceship. That's good. That seems to be running just flat out. We've got a solid blue belt going through there. Whether that's enough to keep everything satisfied, who knows? But at the moment, I'm pretty pretty happy with that. The fact that it's a solid belt means we're doing pretty well. And I think over, the system over in uh, in Norbit that's making the modules is at least only running at half a blue belt. So there's another half blue belt available here to go into everything else that could possibly want it. Down here the Vitalic Reagent, well it, it's coming, it is coming through, it is being supplied at a rate. I'm not convinced that rate is fast enough. Uh, this seems to be a thankless task for Market. No matter how much he comes in and upgrades it and builds it up and builds it up and builds it up, it's still, it's still just flooding through. We're, we're eating it up as fast as it's being made. Although that said, you can see over here on the graph that in the last hour we were we made 59,000 Vitalic Reagents and only used 33,000. So maybe, maybe we are actually just filling up buffers at this point and things will be okay. Uh, it'll be interesting to see. And the, the, I, I'm aware that a lot of the Vitalic Reagent production is going straight into module production. So in theory, if we get to a point where we've actually made enough modules to fill all the buildings up, then we'll stop using it quite so fast. However, if we do get to that point, we'll probably decide we want to upgrade the modules or we want to build more stuff. So again, it's a pretty much a Sisyphean task. He's just going to keep making it. We're going to keep using it. If he makes it faster, we'll use it faster. It's, it's, just, it's just going to go on forever. The uh, Over here with the extract, we can see this being made and used at exactly the same rate. Now, I suspect that's because a lot of the extract is used to make the reagent. So again, as soon as it's made, it gets churned up, churned up into something else and, and, and passed on. So maybe when this, if, if this does ever catch up, then this will calm down a bit. It's hard to say, but this, these numbers seem to be I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know, really know what to say about these, apart from that they seem to be exactly the same. The epoxy, on the other hand, is being made much, much faster than it's being used up, and so that's a promising sign. But then I guess we're not really using epoxy very much, because a little bit of it could be used if we're making the Tier 7 productivity modules, but we don't really use those very much. We've, we've decided that Tier 6 is a level that we're theoretically capable of making in, in reasonable quantities, and so that's the one we tend to use. And I don't think a huge amount of it gets used for science, or at least not at the moment. There are probably other times when we do a big biological research, then all of these numbers will go up, of course. But at the moment, in this, while we're doing energy and and astro related researches, it's not so much of a big deal. The bio, the bio stuff seems to be going okay. However, it would be not. It would be nice to see to see this fill up the buffers a bit more. I. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll keep an eye on it, we'll see how it goes, but for now it seems to be okay. In an attempt to keep it being okay, Mark has done some, uh, some improvements over here as well. He says that he's put in a water and three mineral water mines. Um, putting in a water mine seems like an odd thing to do. Maybe he means, oh, here we go, he's put a new tag on this. So by, when he says a water mine, he means he's, he's, he's gone up to a lake, he's hooked into the side of it, and he's just pumping loads and loads of water out into a, into a duct. That makes a lot of sense. That can then be passed down here into the system to make sure we've got enough water. There's another new tag over here. This is very helpful, being able to find things like this. So We've got, yes, this is the mineral water, one of the mineral water mines he mentioned. And again, that's going into a duct system to be taken off to where it's needed. Wow, doing long-range transfer of liquids by ducts seems seems a little bit odd to me, but hey, if it works, I, I won't knock it too much. And then there's another one up here, another new tag. So this is going to be another mineral water mine area. And again, pumping into, into ducts where it comes over here and then down here to, well, to join on with all the other ones and just give, yeah, be pump, we'll pump all of that into, into the processing system in the middle over here. That's a crazy level of expansion, but... Um, Sure, I, I, I suppose there's, if you've got the ducts and they work well enough, then you don't really need to send it around by train. It, it feels wrong somehow, but also it seems to be working, so I'm not going to criticise it. <laughs> Tristan has been flying around the universe, gathering up pyramids, which means he's been kept getting lots and lots of tier 9 modules, which are very, very nice. And there's only one thing to do with tier 9 productivity and speed modules, and that's put them into your science systems, as you can see here. So we've got, uh, now we've got, we've got up to, we only need three more tier 9 productivity modules before we'll have the entire science system running at the absolute maximum productivity level we can, that, the, that we can do, uh, which is amazing. Uh, we're, we're getting really, really close here. And the speed beacon here, well, it just seems to be full of tier Tier six modules for some reason. I'm I'm not quite sure why. I'm not quite sure where the tier nine ones have gone. Uh, we might have to have a bit of a look into that. But yeah, ideally we want that to be affecting these and making them run as fast as possible as well, uh, to compensate for the uh, tier nine productivity modules. Uh, that said, that said, currently um, production is stopped here because we've run completely run out of tier one uh, deep space science. 
Uh, let's have a let's go and have a look at why that's being a problem. That's so up here we have over here we make the uh, the deep space science. What, what, why are you sad? Because you don't have any deep space one catalogs. Okay, the deep space one catalogs are being made over here in the original deep space science area, which kind of got ignored once we got once we got over to the point of Arcospheres. But you're sad because you don't have any of whatever's meant to be on the bottom of here, which comes around to here, and you're sad because you don't have any. Any nanomaterial? That's a weird one to have run out of. So up here, we don't have any nanomaterial because we don't have any dynamic emitters. We don't have any dynamic emitters because we don't have any quantum processors. I see where this is going. And we don't have any quantum processors because over here where they're being made, we presumably will run out of holmium. Uh, yeah, we've run out of holmium plate. So, okay, well, at least we know what the problem is and it's something that we're currently working on fixing. But, yeah, our requirements for these quantum processors is a bit ridiculous given how difficult they are to make. So... I'm not sure what we're going to do about this. Um, maybe we're going to have to put together a sort of a separate facility that makes just quantum processors, a sort of a, a quantum processor town, if you will, because this 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 is just not keeping up. And then maybe we'd have four trains, each one bringing up a solid train's worth of immersion crystals, blue circuits, holmium cables, and holmium ingots, and just piping them all and dumping them all into the into machines that can then make the make these. That might be the only way we can actually get this to run reasonably sensibly, because the... Oh, and uh, we're going to need quantum phenomenon data as well. Eh, uh, that's going to make it harder. I suppose what we could do then in that case is either have a train that steals quantum phenomenon data from the uh, from the uh, from the energy science area here and takes it over to another town, perhaps up here, or maybe we just squeeze it in down here underneath the um, the material no the matter sciences down down here, or we have a belt bringing the the quantum phenomenon on data all the way down to the bottom of here. And then we have another four stations that are dropping off all the ingredients for the uh, for the quantum processors. Because this system making the quantum processors here, it always has problems. Uh, and even though I've gone in and beefed up the supply in a number of ways, it's... Okay, I was going to say it's still having problems. Right now it's still having problems because of the shortage of holmium. So that's, that's kind of separate. It's not the fault of the system here, but... Yeah, it just doesn't feel like it's able to keep up. I feel like it needs more, just, just generally more, more machines and its own, probably its own separate sub factory to do it so it can run a bit more quickly. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think I should expand it out or do you think this is probably going to be enough once we get a holmium supply up and running? I guess we'll have to wait and see. Previously, we've had problems with the long-range star mapping uh, re researches because we because of the rate we've been pulling these uh, science packs through the astro science packs, and because I, and, and we've been buffering them in here as well. So each one of these chests will buffer, in theory, will buffer up to five thousand packs, as you can see across there. And so previously, it was set to, to buffer until there was five thousand in there, and that. It sort of works. However, when you've done a bit of, when you've been researching quite hard, you tended to find that the ones would run out first, and that's because the ones, any ones that were being made, would then be gobbled up to make twos. The twos would be gobbled up to make threes, and the threes would be gobbled up to make fours. So you'd end up with just fours coming out of the other side, and so in, in, and that meant that we then got out of balance in these chests over here. So in order to sort of sort that one out a bit, I've changed the request over here. So now we're we're watching what's in all four of the chests, and the belts across the bottom are now saying, well, the first one is saying if you've got less than five thousand, then load up. The second one is saying. If you've got fewer twos than you have ones, then load. Then, if you've got fewer threes than twos, then load the third one. If you've got fewer fours than threes, then load the fourth one. And so that means, as we start to run out of ones, we will stop loading up the fours, the threes, and the twos until they're all in, in reasonably well in balance. And that should keep the whole system much more nicely balanced and will stop us running out of ones before we've run out of fours. Now, it remains to be seen whether that works, and it's only going to be a sort of a, a temporary stopgap thing because eventually we'll we'll use up all of everything and then we'll be, we'll be back, we'll, we'll get to the same position. However, if that means we are then able to complete a long range star mapping which uses all of the astro data and then move on to doing something else which uses a bit less astro data, like physical projectile damage 13, I don't know, we probably won't do this one, but you know, something else, and that, that will then give the astro a chance to catch up, then it could help quite a lot. So I think this is going to be an improvement. Meanwhile, Mark has been in and expanded expanded the, well he's calling it bioelectric data, which seems like a rather silly name, so I'm going to carry on calling it Riddler data, because it's got the uh, it's got the big green question mark thing going on. Uh, and that's because up here we're ripping through rather a lot of it in order to make, no not the plague rockets, in order to make the AI cores. And now as you can see we have, well we have plenty because we've run out of quantum processors, and that goes back to what I was saying before. Um, so we've now got to the point where we have enough of this one, uh, it's easily going to be able to keep up because yes, that is a lot of extra machines down here, I'm pretty sure there's only like three or four of them, maybe only maybe only two of them before. So that's a, a big expansion over here, and that is be and that's probably going to be absolutely fine. We'll find out if we ever have enough quantum processors, I guess. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, so that's that's that will have sorted out that well, have improved on that problem. And as you can see over here, we now have we have a good number of the AI cores coming over here into the uh, construction area, and that means we're going we're going to have probably enough to make all of any any of the machines we want to make. However, we are still a little bit short of them for, for loading up this train to take them out away to. I don't even know where AI core drop stations are, but apparently we need them somewhere. Uh, it's probably oh, it might be for the. Um, I think I do know actually. It's for the deep space sciences over here. Yes, we drop off AI cores here to make Naquium processors to make various things over here. So as long as as long as we don't do too much deep space science before we get managed to get the uh, the Holmium up and running and, and the quantum processors up and running nicely, maybe we'll be okay. Uh, no promises, but we shall see how it goes. We've been doing little bits of fixing here and there as well, of course, as usual. So I came along, I uh, reprogrammed all of these blue, well, actually, no, I programmed all of these blue warehouses. For example, this one here with the heavy assemblies in it is now trying to pull 20,000 heavy assemblies out of the logistics system. Now, there aren't any in the logistics system, so this is going to work. This means it will, if, if any do accidentally get into the system, because maybe something got, gets demolished by the bots and they don't know what to do with them, or maybe somebody has some in their inventory and they dump them into the logistics system to go into the chest of shame, this will pull them back out again. And this is supposed to basically tidy up the chests of shame a little bit. And as I was doing this, it turned out there were one or two that needed to be needed to have their requests removed. And I can't remember which ones those were, um, but it was because they were being they were being fed into the logistics system somewhere else. Uh, I think we've now sort of fixed that a little bit more properly by making sure that wherever they're fed into the logistics system, they're fed into a green chest, which means they can then be taken to anybody who requests them or to any blue chest that's trying to build from them as long as the uh, request from buffer chest is ticked. Now, request from buffer chest shouldn't be ticked here, and that means if any if any of these get put into a green chest, we, uh, they won't be pulled over and put into this system. So in theory, this means we won't get an endless loop or we won't get endless bot transport of thing of things being made perhaps over here going into a into a red chest brought over to here and then going and then being put in there by bot rather than by train which is the way it's supposed to work. Tristan helped out a little bit here by finding some uh, some red chests that need to be turned into green ones. I think there's like well, like that one but not actually that one. So there's probably a few of them around here somewhere. I I, 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 I don't know. There'll be there'll be some there'll be some um, chests around that used to be blue that used to be red chests have now been turned into green chests so it does so we don't end up transporting them through. And Tristan picked up a few of those. He said which ones? Yes, he says he's done holmium cables and beryllium rods. So oh, I don't know why there'd be a beryllium rod um, chest, but presumably down here somewhere there was a, a red chest that the rods were being fed into. I I, I don't know where it is. But, but apparently there was, and that was causing issues. And he's done the same thing with holmium cables as well, so that'll be down here probably. And it, it, these aren't these aren't big, difficult things to sort out, but they are quite important just to make sure that you don't get. Oh, there we go. There's there's the green chest that used probably presumably used to be a red chest. It's now a green chest, which means the holmium cable um, blue warehouse over here can now be set to not request from buffer chests, and so it won't pull them over. And so this this works nicely. If I if I tick that, for example, you can see there we go. It's now it's now bringing fifty of them over. If we if we look, they'll probably presumably they'll be being pulled out of a chest over here. There'll be some bots on their way over. I'm not going to watch, but that yeah that that is not what we want. We don't want them being brought over by bot, so these should always be unticked down here. So we're not requesting from buffer chests. Mark has done further further improvement to the advanced solar panel production. So this is these are required in order to be made into the blue flat space solar panels, to be made into the red holmium solar space solar panels, to be made into the eventually potentially made into the black naquium solar panels. Uh, there, so it's one of the tiers that's required. So he's come in here. He's, he's upgraded it by improving the belts and putting in a load of modules as well. So this, these systems are now running faster than they were before. This looks like a prime target for a beacon if we ever, ever I saw one, but um, never mind. We'll, we can put those in later if we require them. And so now we're we're producing these these um, solar panels a bit quicker because well we're making so many solar panels in order to try and power all of those anchors out there uh, that we need rather a lot of them, and we've got half a train's worth in this warehouse over here so yeah we definitely need to make this at these uh, we definitely need to keep making these and churning them through because we don't we don't have remotely enough at the moment Tristan has put in an additional machine turning iron ore into matter because this one down here couldn't keep up with the rate we we're chucking iron through. Um, I don't know how much of that was because we were trying to make it from the extra extra system over here where we're bringing in unwanted iron ore from Oliran and then just turning it into iron as quickly as possible or and how much of it is due to well this sort of flood coming through from well I guess from trains bringing it in and dumping it out or from core processing. It's just, the system couldn't keep up so now we have another machine using it up in order to help us keep up and that seems to be working. He noted that we have too much, well, we have an awful lot of uranium over here. Now, it hasn't got to the point of actually filling up all of the, well, actually, actually I was going to say it hasn't got to the point of filling up the warehouses. It has, because we're overflowing it down here, and so that's being brought off and um, also turned into, yes, also turned into matter. So, 
I don't think that's a problem. That just means we have lots and lots of uranium and it's got to the point where we're just using the overflow to turn it into matter. So yeah, that's great. It was also pointed out, I think Mark spotted it and Tristan fixed it, that downstream was struggling. We had so much junk being brought down by all the trains from Norbit that it wasn't that the uh, the, tra the trains down here weren't able to keep up with the amount of stuff that was coming through. So Tristan has created a, uh, a spaghetti abomination up here, which allows us to now load two trains in parallel simultaneously. And that means we can load, load the trains up twice as quickly and then send them off to go and unload. And what do we have here? We have three purple belts loading each wagon. And up at the unloading end, which is up here, we have uh, two purple belts unloading each wagon. This does not seem entirely sustainable to me. I mean, it's okay. At the, it seems to be okay at the moment. But if we've got, if we've got essentially six belts loading per wagon, because we've got two trains loading in three each, I can't help feeling. And then we've got two belts on, uh, and then two belts unloading each wagon. I can't help feeling that those numbers don't really add up and we might be going to run into a problem up here. Maybe we're going to need to have an additional unloading station up here. Although that said, at the moment it seems to be okay and the the, 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 the system down at the bottom is empty. We have, yes we have trains coming in here, but we don't have a massive queue of them lining up waiting to be unloaded. So it seems to be okay, but I could see possible doom in the future. Um, I think we'll just wait and see for that one. Tristan has also added in more trains so that we have more of them available. So there, are, uh, so there's more, so that we'll have to have, be able to have more of them queued up down at the bottom here. As you can see, we've got a nice healthy queue of trains waiting to go in. Although a lot more on one side than the other for some reason. A lot of this is a little bit weird. We'll have to see how it, how it goes. Actually, looking at these splitters, this 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 single belt coming down here is then split four ways. So I guess it's a lot less. There's a lot less being put in than I was expecting there to be. We appear to have 18 belts coming down from the top, but then they're never going to all be... F uh, I, I, I don't know. It seems a bit weird. Having a second train being able to fill up at the same time seems like it's going to be an improvement. I, I don't know. This, this is all a bit, a little bit odd because of the uh, because of the way, way it's all been spaghettied in the way, the way it has. So, I don't know. We'll just, we'll just keep an eye on it, make sure everything seems to be all right, and hopefully everything will be. But if not, we can always expand it. We can always find ways to expand things. We also ran into a problem with this station at the top of the elevator filling up. And this is where all the junk goes that comes from scrap recycling. So scrap gets brought in here, pulverised down into, well, lots of useful resources. And then passed over here into this warehouse where it then gets loaded into a train as it swoops through here and taken down to the ground. Now, in theory, these, this should be emptied by trains that are doing the down run from taking from from bringing other things up. So, for example, we bring a load of stuff up for energy science. It all gets dropped off here. Then, in theory, those trains should come along here. They should fill up and then head down to the planet where they'll unload all that junk and, and it'll be disposed of. Now, unfortunately, a lot of our trains recently have been switching over to using the, using the secondary elevator because they're bringing stuff up in bulk, and that means they're not taking stuff down from here. And so, this has become a problem. We've also had a few more specialised trains being added in that. Uh, therefore also not taking stuff down and so we now have an emergency downstream train that will pull in here if the station ever gets too full and we'll load up from here and then take it down so we've got we've now got an emergency overflow so normally we should take stuff away from here just with the normal trains that will flow through the system but sometimes since that isn't enough we've now got some emergency trains that can come along and fill in the gaps when required and now let us move on to the research. Well, in the last stream, we managed to finish Long Range Star Mapping 21 and do some of Long Range Star Mapping 22. Uh, 22 has now finished and we've done some of 23 while I've been uh, yabbering on during this video, but that doesn't count. That wasn't part of the, uh, that wasn't done in the stream. So that means we'll have discovered a new um, s constellation out there somewhere. It's presumably this this triangular, well, actually no, presumably it's this, this one. Oh, I don't know, we've discovered, there's a, a new one discovered anyway, and we, so that gives us a bit more information to play with. We'll probably find something useful to do with that at some point. Point. Since that will have ripped through absolutely all of the Astro Packs, Tristan then went in and did Beryllium Conversion, which is, uh, or Beryl Conversion, which allows you to turn Beryl into Matter and Matter into Beryl. Um, that's I can't see that being particularly useful because we don't have Beryllium in a place where there's much matter, but you never know. We, 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 we may find it useful at some point, and we kind of want to do these, these researches as part of the uh, part of the completionist of a uh, side. So we, we need to pick these up at some point. And because these don't use for, don't use loads and loads of astro sciences, they only use one of them, they're a good one to fill in the gaps. For similar reasons, he's also done Holmium conversion, Iridite conversion, Vulcanite conversion. Oh, and that's it. That's all the conversions. <laughs> okay, so he's done a couple of extra ones of those as well. Just again to, to sort of to, to polish those off. We probably still won't use any of those, but they are available. But they're available in case of an emergency and to get us a bit that bit closer to uh, a, a being completionist. Similarly, we've got energy storage now, which is presumably this is just a massive accumulator. Yeah, it's a five gigajoule accumulator that requires naquium processors, naquium heat pipes, naquium accumulators, and naquium plates. I 
that seems like the sort of thing that may be useful on a spaceship and probably elsewhere you, you probably you, you you just wouldn't because you go you'd use uh, naquium accumulators or maybe even holmium accumulators and save yourself an absolute fortune in other things um because yeah these these are going to be really really expensive to make but they're but they're probably more compact than putting in 10 naquium accumulators would have been He's also researched Energy Shield Mark VI, which is where the guy really lifts his hands over his head and goes, woo. Um, yeah, you can see as he goes through, he's at Energy 3 or Mark III, so bring them out to his sides. Four up a little bit higher. Five is a sort of star, some sort of star pose. And then six, he's really got them right up above his head. He's getting really excited about Energy Shield Six. We don't use Energy Shields because they're not compatible with jetpacks. Uh, however, if we forever found an even more dangerous pyramid, maybe they'd be useful there. But as I've discussed in the past, we've outgrown the biters now. They are, they're, they're no longer any sort of threat. So once again, the only real reason to research these, the Energy Shield Sixes, is for completionism. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll plug away at these things while we're waiting to have enough science to do other things. We also finished off Worker Robot Speed 13, uh, because having the bots move a bit faster is quite nice. It takes forever for anything to get built when it's miles away from the uh, from the centre of the factory. So having them move that little bit faster is, is quite nice. It's another uh, a plus 60% speed, apparently. That's not bad. I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. <laughs> And that's the lot. The next thing we're going to we're going to be working on, or will have been work will will be going to be working on. I don't know what tents to use there. Will be the long range star mapping twenty two. As you saw, that one finished, and then we ran out of um, deep space sciences for to, for doing number twenty. Oh no, it is twenty two. We're running through at the moment. I was I was a little bit wrong earlier. We uh, and then we ran out of deep space science pack one. So that's why we stopped doing that one. And I think everything else we want to research at this point is going to take deep space science of one form or another. So if we can't even make number one, then the others are going to struggle. Now, if there are some small ones, like, okay, we could probably 500, there might be 500 deep space science threes on the on the, on the the belt. So we might be able to get thruster suit four. We might be able to, we might be able, might be, um, we might be able to get planetary teleporter. There's a few little ones. That we, we might be able to pick off some of the little ones, but all the really big sort of semi-infinite researches like mining productivity or factory spaceship, or even Spaceship Victory, those are going to require far too much. We're not going to be able to do those with the amount that's just sitting on the belts, I don't think. So until we've got the Holmium supply up and running and uh, and going and working a bit more reliably, I don't think we're going to be able to do very much in the uh, in, in the research areas. But, you know, we're still working on that, so I don't think it'll be too long till we have that running. And so after rather a lot of talking, I think this is going to be the end of the uh, the episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. We will be back on Monday with some more, uh, more streaming. We'll be playing, obviously, some more Factorio K2SE, where we'll be trying to figure all of those supply issues I've been talking about. And then once that's done, we'll be looking for some more things to go off and play with. Uh, maybe we'll start thinking about the puzzle a bit more, who knows. Then on Wednesday, I should be back to play some more Satisfactory. Things are going quite nicely. I'm working on the things that aren't actually science packs, but might as well be based on the way the game uses them. And the factory is expanding and growing and growing and expanding in leaps and bounds. It's getting quite big now, actually. It's covering a decent amount of that sort of starting plane area that I started out on. And uh, it's got to get into the point where I have to think a little bit before I can build a new sub factory because uh, I have to think about where I'm going to put it. Unless, of course, I build it out over the infinite featureless void, but that seems like a bad idea because at some point I'm bound to fall off and then just disappear into the uh, into the no, into the the nowhere. And then at the weekend, I'll be back with some more of these videos, of course, uh, catching up on the last stream. So I hope to see you for all of that. Please make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on anything, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.